directory traversal. And of course, we have a Linux local file inclusion, remote file inclusion. So with all this information in mind, we can actually immediately copy Hi and welcome back to another episode on how to hack. So today we'll be discussing the use of Black Widow. So it is a web application hacking, web application testing tool that you can use and it is Python based. And of course it will actually help you gather open source intelligence information, do fuzzing on open web application security project vulnerabilities. So if you are trying and thinking about securing your web servers or you're running some web application service over the internet, look up OOPS top 10. Think about your application security framework and lifecycle and how you can actually protect a lot of your sites. And of course, moving on, we can actually see a very nice logo over here. So of course, this is a Python base and two key capabilities. One is actually finding out more information about the web server in question. And two is actually about using it to do fuzzing to find out vulnerabilities on a web application server immediately. So that is really helpful and useful in terms of speeding up the web application penetration testing onto any web servers. So without further ado, let us get started on today's tutorial. So over here, we got Colix running and I can open up terminal. And of course I can zoom in a little so it's easier for you to see. And I can go ahead and go into the Black Widow directory that I have downloaded. So once you do a git clone, you can actually go in straight there. So of course, once we see it in the Black Widow, we can enter ls-l to see all the information. So I can do a clat black widow and we can see all the information regarding the source code of black widow on python so if you have time i really encourage you to read through some of these really really interesting source code of this attacking tools it's gonna be very helpful in terms of learning about building your own security tools and so on and it is not that hard actually so anyway moving forward to speed up the process of the tutorial the first thing we'll do is actually go into sudo Python and of course we can actually enter black widow followed by dash u and you gotta enter the protocol of http www.loyliangyang.com so I'm testing on my own website just to find out if we can see any interesting information on the site so go ahead and hit enter on that and of course we'll be prompted with the administrator password on Call Linux. Hit enter on that and you will be crawling through the entire site looking for static and dynamic URLs and helping you speed up the process of crawling through the web server immediately. And this is really helpful because all this data is also going to be saved inside USR share and so on. So a wonderful way for you to actually find out a lot of information regarding any web servers. So the first thing you want to look out for once we're in here we can actually see that we have a lot of information and a lot of repeats of the URLs based on the different kind of payloads they're using. So here we can see external dynamic URL. So this is for you to subscribe into the channel if you haven't already. So of course scrolling down we have the YouTube link. We got the LinkedIn link, Facebook and so on. So go ahead and add me on Facebook. And if you have any questions there it's a lot more interactive. And of course this is some of the articles that I published many years back and I just left it there. And of course, I was also looking a lot into cloud, a lot into enterprise service bus, service oriented architecture and so on. So of course, we can see a lot of links here and we can scroll down further and you can actually find a lot of juicy information on other websites whenever you do all this crawling. But remember, doing all these scans could actually get into trouble, especially if you're probing for some of this information in a different manner. And of course, it is a great area because all these are actually publicly available information. And at the same time, you're using a tool to actually test on the web server, looking out for information. So it could be misconfiguration of the website, misconfiguration of web server. The administrator accidentally leave out some of the critical data information out onto the internet that could also be crawled by some of these search engines. So of course, scrolling all the way down, this is actually really helpful, especially if you look over here, we can see that this site is most likely running on WordPress and it is running on this specific team. And of course, this is actually giving you a lot of information about what the website is running on and potential ways for you to actually think about how you could actually go after the website. 
And of course, scrolling all the way down, we are trying to find out more other information that could be useful for us to look out for and potentially do some penetration testing on. So of course, we are finding out more information like advanced SQL injection, how to hack browser exploitation, social engineering framework, and so on. And of course, all these are the links that are published before and you can go and take a look at it for some of these tutorials. And of course, here scrolling down, all this information has been compiled for you and it's being placed into a text file so you can easily share it if you're doing penetration testing in a group. And the next tool we can look at is actually on the injectx. So we can enter ls-l and here we can see injectx.py. And of course, I have a web application server running and I can enter ifconfig and we can see the IP address is 192.168.1.14. So moving forward, what we will do is actually open any of your favorite web browser and we can surf into the web application server. So all you got to do is enter 192.168.1.14, hit enter on that. And of course, here we can click that mutually day and we can go into OAP's top 10, A1 injection, SQL injection extract data, click on user information. So it could be any web application server running on any web forms and here we can see like a username and password and we can enter 123, 123, click on view account details. So this is a typical web application server that you have a request on and of course here we got a response of authentication error, bad username and password. So what we can do is copy the whole of URL and of course we can go back to Black Widow, do a dot slash inject x.python followed by dash u on the parameter of the web link paste the clipboard hit enter on that and it will actually fast the parameter into the site telling you about all the information that you can potentially get and all the vulnerabilities that we can discover so here very quickly based on the payload we can find out all the vulnerabilities so the first one we got a cross-site scripting file and then we got a sql injection file and we got a SQL injection again. And of course, we get a Linux directory traversal. And of course, we have a Linux local file inclusion, remote file inclusion. So with all this information in mind, we can actually immediately copy the URL with the payload and we'll be able to find out a lot more details. So for example, over here, we got the vulnerable URL and I can just copy the link address and we can go into a new tab and all I got to do is paste and go and immediately we can find out all the users inside the web application server and from here we can do a lot more probe and capabilities to expand our penetration testing so moving down we can also see a Linux local file inclusion so here we can actually also copy the information and of course we can copy the link address so it is the same we can hit enter on that and of course this is the same but we have a different payload here is using a puff traversal and here we are looking at a local file inclusion meaning that the local file from another directory is available to this web application access and of course finally we also have a remote file inclusion meaning that we can actually use this to look up other files outside of this web application server so we can copy the link address paste the information over here and we can see that a particular payload is being included inside this web server and that is dangerous too so of course here we can see the information on http and so on so we can copy the details and of course we can paste it over here so this is the payload and based on the information here we can enter http and we can see test.arashni-scanner.com and then we can do a slash f again slash rfi.md5.txt hit enter on that and of course we get the same payload likewise over here so it has been embedded into the web application server so i hope you have learned something valuable in today's tutorial and remember to like share and subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial thank you so much once again for watching hey guys welcome back to another episode on how to hack so we are at the end of the challenges for WebGoat, which is a web application penetration testing series that we have began with you. And of course, under challenges, we have number challenges. And I want to take this chance to go through what happens when you are going through a use case of bug bounty or finding vulnerabilities manually with a web application system or server. And of course, we are on the second challenge, which is of course over here, it says, can you log in as Larry? So as part of this challenge, Alright, in a real-world scenario, 
you would have no hints. There will be no hints for you to take or advise, where it will point to you specifically in a direction that ask you to try to break into the system. All right. So in this case, one wonderful workflow that you can actually try to follow is based directly on a hint that has been provided to you through this whole course. And that is on the left side, injection, broken authentication, sensitive data exposure, XML external entities, broken access control, cross-site scripting, insecure deserialization, vulnerable components, request forgeries, as well as client server attacks. Okay, so what do I mean exactly? Is that as you're doing all this bug bounty, web application penetration testing, you can actually try to go through each and every of this open web application security project top 10. And as you try it, you realize that it becomes a workflow for you. And of course, in this case, we have a login page, all right? And which is going to be the most applicable for a login page? Chances are you will start off with injection, all right? And if you're looking for other input places, you could be looking at cross-site scripting. All right, so you start off as that, and then you look into other places, other parts of the website where you could possibly try to run some of these vulnerabilities checks and find out whether there are any input forms, any parts of the server that could be exposing data. So very quickly, we'll be able to find out all these details, all right? So without further ado, let us go ahead with the tutorial. So in this case, right, we are straight into the login page, right, for this particular challenge. No hints, so what do we do, right? So it says the following. It's a login page, all right, we have not submitted anything, and it says, can you log in as Larry? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and enter L-A-R-R-Y, I'm gonna enter, say for example, password as Larry, and see what we get in a normal use case. So a normal use case meaning that as you're signing in, you're testing out the input forms and so on, you want to try to just enter, right? What would a normal user enter into the inputs? Okay, so go ahead and click on login. And once you click on login, right, it says, please try to log in as Larry, not Larry. Okay, so with a capital L. All right, so immediately we can change that up. I can change it to a capital L. All right, so it's case sensitive. And when I click on login, it says this is not the correct password for Larry. Please try again. All right. So obviously right at the top here, it already has some kind of check. All right, some kind of verification that you can only enter this particular username to enter into the site okay and of course the password you can enter any views that you want okay so in my case we can use a number of examples all right so we can try for example over here we have a sql injection that we could try to insert into the system so for example i can enter a semicolon or a single code so i can enter a single code and i can enter password for example okay and when i hit login all right obviously at the bottom you'll be able to see this is not the correct password for Larry. Please try again. So we can see this kind of details and data directly by trying it out. All right, so we can try a single code as well. So for example, over here, I can enter a single code and I can copy the information and I can go into the password field and I can paste it and I can click login. All right, so once I go in, once again, we're not able to get any response from the server. Okay, so what we can do next is that we can go and try to automate some of the SQL injection. So one of it is of course via SQL map, all right, which we have learned as part of the course. The other way is more of a manual approach, which is using Burp Suite. So again, we can head back to preferences, go under network settings, and we can enable the manual proxy configuration. Click OK on that. And we have Burp Suite running right here, okay? So all I gotta do right now is I can actually turn on intercept, all right? So once I have the intercept turned on, I can go back to the site and I can go ahead and click for some key in some data and click on login. Okay. And of course under Burp Suite, okay, I can drop this lesson overview, lesson manual. All this are information that's always central into the system. So in this case, we have a post, all right, which is we are trying to log into the web application system. And right at the bottom, we have username underscore login and we have the password underscore login. All right. So I can do a right click and send to repeater send to repeater you can use the control r as well as a shortcut 
So once we go to repeater, okay, we have, all right, for example, over here, we have the following information, all right? So here we have the following, okay? So we have username and we have password, okay? So all you gotta do is try a password. So I can try, for example, Larry that we have tried earlier and we recognize that we were not able to get a response. So it says over here, right, the feedback. This is not the correct password for Larry. Please try again, okay? So what about if we try a single quote? All right, so we have a list of all those payloads that we can inject into the web application system or as part of SQL injection, as part of learning SQL injection. So again, this is a more manual approach in learning about how we can do manual payloads into web application systems. So I can go ahead and click on send. And right here, we will get the error message. So sometimes a lot of these error messages, they do not get shown in the web application system app because they're trying to mask some of these error messages, configuration feedback that could accidentally expose a lot of data. So back here, back to Burp Suite, we are picking up all these different responses. So over here, we can see the following, right? Message, request processing failed, nested exception, all right, statement. Okay, as you can see over here, all right, we have number of single quote in statement, select, password from challenge underscore users where user id is larry all right and password we have three single quotes right here okay so what we can do right now is we can put for example okay we can put or one equal one okay and we can go ahead and click send all right it says internal server error and then we have request processing failed nested exception so we can read the syntax error exception so it's showing us literally what we're entering wrongly okay so in this case we can see and password all right it's a semi uh, we have a double single quote here or one equal one so what we can do instead is we can actually go ahead and enter a single quote all right for one and then a single quote again right before the last one and go ahead and click send all right, and it says, congratulations, you solved the challenge. Here is your flag. And you can copy and paste the flag into the web application system to track your scoring. Okay, so once again, I hope you have learned something valuable. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll try my best to answer any of your questions. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. Thank you so much once again for watching.